154 years ago, on March 30, 1867, Russia had to sell Alaska to America for a sum of $7.2 million. That sum, which amounts to just $113 million in today's currency, officially ended Russia's 125-year odyssey in Alaska. Today, Alaska is one of the wealthiest states in the United States, with a current GDP of $50 billion as a result of its abundance of natural resources such as petroleum, gold, and fish, as well as its vast expanse of pristine wilderness and strategic location as a window on Russia and gateway to the Arctic. So the questions are, what prompted Russia to sell Alaska? What are the economic implications of the sale? And what are the geopolitical implications of the U.S. having territory so close to Russia? First, let's look at what prompted Russia to sell Alaska. As far as we know, Danish mariners arrived in Alaska in 1741. Following this, Russian hunters migrated to Alaska, where the first Russian settlements were founded in 1784. Over time, the Russians who established management and businesses in the area were unable to give Alaska the necessary importance due to the negative economic consequences of the Crimean War between 1853 and 1856. As a result, they started to withdraw from the region. Then came a policy by the USA. The policy which was followed by the USA was to keep European states away from the American continent. In light of this, the Monroe Doctrine was established on December 2, 1823. The doctrine is thought to apply only to the imperialist nations of Western Europe. However, the U.S. was also concerned about the Russia's expansionism on the American continent and wanted to prevent the nation from implementing the aforementioned ideology. As a result, negotiations to sell Alaska began between Russia and the United States. And despite the American Civil War impeding the process, the parties reached an agreement on March 30, 1867, and Russia officially sold Alaska to the United States for $7.2 million. The agreement was signed by then U.S. Secretary General William H. Seward, who pushed for his country's territorial expansion. However, both Seward and U.S. President Andrew Johnson were severely criticized in this process by Congress and the press. Eventually, Alaska was accepted as the 49th state of the United States in 1959. But that's not the only reason. Another reason Russia sold Alaska was because of its inability to defend Alaska. After the defeat of Russia by the British in the Crimean War, the Russians required funds to defend themselves in the future. And Russia feared that Alaska would be readily captured in any future battle with the British. Therefore, Emperor Alexander II chose to sell the colony. As a result, in 1859, Russia approached the Americans. Eventually, Russia sold Alaska territory to the United States rather than risk losing it in battle with a rival like Great Britain. Sadly, for three decades after the purchase of Alaska, the United States paid little attention to Alaska. The American public saw the land of Alaska as barren and worthless and dubbed the purchase Seward's Folly and Andrew Johnson's Polar Bear Garden, among other derogatory names. It was after a significant gold resource was discovered in Nome, Alaska in 1899, sparking a gold rush that the public perception of the Alaska purchase changed. It was then the United States recognized the previously overlooked land's economic potential. In fact, the strategic value of Alaska even grew further during World War II due to its proximity to Japan, and then during the Cold War due to its proximity to the Soviet Union. However, Alaska's significance grew not only as a result of its gold and location. In fact, the immediate biggest win for the U.S. from acquiring Alaska is the discovery of other natural resources. Alaska possesses vast reserves of coal, oil, natural gas, zinc, and lumber. And Alaska, which is the 49th state in America, is now known for its vast natural riches that provide 25% of America's energy and more than 50% of its seafood. It is also the largest state in terms of area, having 663,267 square miles of rich, broad land that has produced billions of dollars of gold and oil, as well as fish, furs, and timber, although it remains sparsely populated. It's also worth mentioning that the oil and gas sector is the largest component of Alaska's economy, accounting for about 85% of the state budget. And in recent decades, Alaska has derived a greater portion of its revenue from oil output, which peaked in the 1990s and has since declined. As of 2020, Alaska had its lowest oil production in 40 years. 
Its crude oil production averaged 448,000 barrels per day in 2022, which was the lowest amount since 1976. This was partly because of the pandemic, which caused oil prices to decline, and as a result, Alaska suffered more than any other producer due to the high cost of extracting oil. Much of it was extracted from Alaska's North Slope and shipped to the other West Coast states through the Trans-Alaska Pipeline System. As a result, the oil industry in Alaska is extremely price sensitive as sales must exceed $60 per barrel to be profitable. Besides that, Russia has been in recession every year since the crude price dropped in 2014. In light of this, because oil revenues fund 85% of the state budget, Alaska maintains a budget deficit of $1 billion a year. But sadly, oil no longer covers the majority of the bills for the state government. But the good news is that the Permanent Investment Fund, which was used to save about 25% of Alaska's oil income, is now worth more than $70 billion, far exceeding the state's budget deficit. The earnings from this investment fund are being used to cover the state's bills. Without a doubt, Alaska's economy will shift from an oil-based one to a more diverse one in the future years. The good news is that it invested the oil boom supplies in a permanent fund, which is a relief to the public finances. The bad news is that despite having a favorable tax environment and business-friendly laws, Alaska will continue to face territorial isolation, high transportation, and utility cost. Even so, it's tough to think America regrets buying Alaska for $7.2 million. But what are the geopolitical implications of the U.S. having territory close to Russia? Today, Alaska is strategically important for Russia and the Arctic region. And talking of the geopolitical significance of Alaska was examined, it was discovered that Alaska is the closest region to the east of Russia through the Bering Strait, as well as being situated on the American continent. There is also an extension of the island starting from Alaska. It is also on the route to Russia's Commander Islands and the Sea of Okhotsk via the Aleutian Islands, Fox Islands, Andreanov Islands, Rat Islands, and Near Islands. As a result, Russia's east is naturally surrounded by the U.S. from the south, posing a geopolitical issue for the Moscow administration. Alaska also has several U.S. military facilities. It is the main reason the U.S. is in the Arctic. The United States literally maintains military bases in the interior and southern regions of Alaska. And while Alaska became a police station for the Obama administration, it has also prompted Russia and other nations to plan new Arctic bases. As a result, there is a chance that the northern portion of Alaska will also become a military base and a conflict zone. In reality, military tensions in Alaska have risen as well. According to a report dated October 18, 2022, the U.S. Air Force prevented two Russian bombers from operating in the area. Not only that, but because of Washington's policies to expand its presence in the Arctic, Beijing, which has close ties with Moscow, is uncomfortable with Washington policies. These changes will create a security dilemma for the region. Well, this is so because the United States thinks its capacity to gain political influence in regions where they do not exist militarily is limited. This has also been the situation in recent Arctic geopolitics. Meanwhile, as the geopolitics of the Arctic turned into a field of competition between the states of the region, voices are rising from Moscow that Alaska should be returned to Russia. Recently, it has been observed that comments about Alaska have taken on an official dimension. For as much as the Kremlin believes it can exert pressure on the White House in this way. This, however, does not appear to be feasible. If the U.S. accepts Russia's request, it may confront similar demands from France, Spain, and Mexico. This is so because the United States has purchased lands from these nations at various times. With that being said, it's seen that the geopolitical, geostrategic, and geoeconomic characteristics of the region make Alaska indispensable for the U.S. Thanks for watching till the end of this video. Please share, like, and subscribe. Feel free to leave your thoughts about this video and also watch our other videos. See you next time.